Hello, I'm Rachel Gilkey, Director of Programming and Education at Irish Arts Centre. We are delighted to be taking part in Culture Night, which is taking place today all across Ireland, here in New York, and all across the world. We have put together for you a Culture Night IAC playlist for your enjoyment, featuring a mix of our multidisciplinary digital programming from this past spring and summer. For the next hour, dip into music from Deering Glacken, Sarah Flynn, Ye Vagabonds, The X Collective, and Hatfits and Kara, a dance film from Muftal Youssef, and a segment from our NYC Irish Dance Festival, poetry from Iggy McGovern, Branagh's puppet making workshop, and a tour of photographer Stephen McGinn's exhibition, Unapproved Roads. Irish Arts Centre launched our fall programming just yesterday, so to find out what's in store in the future, from some of your favorite artists and those you have not yet met, visit irishartcenter.org. Thank you to Culture Night and the Department of Foreign Affairs for including us today. Starting our playlist is a new song from Utsoff Law in collaboration with Sam Comerford and Nitin Mita. Enjoy. I think uh, we're going to be premiering the track for you now, so um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what you're going to hear. So me, Sam, and Nathan have been recording this over the past couple of weeks, and the piece is inspired by two laments. As I mentioned earlier, like one of them is the lament of the Three Marys, which is kind of this seminal lament in the Shanos tradition. And the other piece is Yat Pia Ki Ai, which uh, was composed by Bari Gulam Ali Khan from India, and it's kind of he wrote it as a lament for his wife dying. And it's again one of the iconic pieces of the Thumri genre, which kind of lends itself less according to the rules and more expression. So you can kind of break a lot of the strict rules that are in Indian music. And for me, Shano singing encapsulates so much of a similar mentality. Um, and just the raw emotion and expression of those singers blends really well together. And our idea was to pay homage to these great pieces, but also try and explore and see where the combined inspiration from both of these pieces could take us. Um, and it's a, yeah, it was a shame that we couldn't get together and work this out in real time, but we both spent hours listening to the recordings, hours reading up about the musicians, and um, ended up sending tracks, bringing them back. Um, uh, Nitinji recorded his uh, tabla on a phone because he didn't have any mics where he was quarantined. But we spent a lot of time trying to make it as special as we can. And uh, it's also one of the things that you might notice is that the pitch of the entire piece increases as uh, you're listening to it, but very, very slowly, which is, again, I love old recordings. And I love listening to Indian classical music on old recordings, because they always pitch shift a little bit and have this lovely warmth to it. And in terms of whatever Shano singers that I've heard, everyone always goes up in pitch as the song ascends. And when I first heard that, I thought, oh, maybe because there's no instrument, it's hard to stay in tune. But slowly realized that it's an incredibly effective ornamentational technique. The song rises as the story rises and the pitch of the singer. So we tried to replicate that with uh, feeding a master through a tape machine. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with the results. So I hope you enjoy this piece. And um, we're working towards bringing more and more and getting a whole quarantine album made together. So hopefully that will be out soon.
recognize him from uh, from our show How to Catch a Star. Uh, he's giving you a little wave there. Hi. How's it going? Hi. Yes. Hello. No, I have to count down. Um, so the boy is a tabletop puppet, which means that he is operated always on top of a table. Okay. Uh, the way we operate them is with a handle and with a uh, um, a thumb hole in the back of the head for us to be able to operate the uh, the head and bring them to life. So he's an example of, of uh, one of those types of puppets. He doesn't have any knees, notice, because that's the style of character that he has. But he's still able to walk quite easily, aren't you? Yeah, and he can go backwards. Okay, um, I'm just going to put you down over here for a second. So I'm going to put him to one side. Another type of puppet we have is on Shannar Bjog, and he's um, more like a, an old man, more like a human. And same, he has a handle at the back and he has 
thumb indentation on his head for us to allow to first be allowed to move him. And he walks, he can walk like this. He can look. He can look out. Also, hello. Yeah. Okay. Come back here now for a second, sir. What we're going to do today is we're going to show you, well I'm going to show you, how to make a puppet completely from newspaper. And we're going to be able to make that puppet come to life like these beautiful puppets here. Performing one of her songs, Mama Say, just enjoy this. Miss Sini Summers.
This is Bass Collective.
Yeah, for me, I don't really see these images as being particularly uh, political as such. I find them more that they're an archive and not a document of time and place, they're like an ever-changing border. I photographed when I was 16, 17, as I said, whenever the British Army were occupying South Armagh. I photographed in 2006 whenever the British Army had just moved out. Yeah, and I photographed last year and um, it's forever changing and it, it always will. It's a fluid border and um, I can, will continue to photograph down there. You know, this, I feel it's part of my identity um, as a photographer, you know, um, going back and documenting this change and um, it also gives me a great excuse to go home. The roads were near deserted the day McGinn set out with his father and held that unique inertia that seems to befall the countryside in January. Brexit was on the brain, and on the national news morning, noon and night. At Rowan's Point, where a narrow road runs horizontally to splinter the photographer standing in the north from a white farmhouse within spitting distance in the south, a white van lingered to watch McGinn set up the shot before pulling up alongside for the driver to ask, Are you taking pictures of my beautiful countryside? No suspicion. No malice. All the while, from Rowan's Crossing, a fork in the road at the crest of a hill with one road leading to the Republic and the other continuing into the north, to the more traffic-familiar armagh Monaghan border, where a customs post stands no longer and the transition between counties can be missed with a blink, William McGinn recalled to his son the years where these roads were blockaded, patrolled, abandoned, and it was his job to man them. Along its 500 kilometre seam, the Irish border has 208 official road crossings. It took civil servants almost six months to re-establish where these crossings were in the wake of the Brexit vote. Though the border and what it signified was a frequent target of IRA violence, many of its crossings being heavily militarised, his own job was decidedly more humdrum. It was very rare to actually see someone, he recalls. I know it might sound remarkable, but if you were on a road that didn't go anywhere... Nobody is going to be on that road. I got into photography when I was 16, 17, um, while studying in Armagh. We used to bunk off school, we'd drive down to South Armagh, we'd climb mountains, we'd um, jump in lakes, we'd take pictures of the British Army watchtowers, um, we'd have helicopters chasing us. Um, you know, South Armagh at the time was uh, heavily militarised uh, and a kind of a no-go area for a lot of, for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, it was an interesting space and it was an interesting place to be. Um, the, the mixture of the beauty, the landscape and then this harsh sort of military installations. Um, it's something that I kind of found beauty in um, and it's somewhere that I, I repeatedly go back to and um, I, I still go back to and it's, it's amazing to see the landscape change with them, um, with time and with politics. It is in a constant state of transition, the late Gloria E. Anzaldúa wrote on borders. Though the borderlands that have been frozen here by McGinn's camera, where no ceremony marks one country ending and another beginning, aside from a stone bridge, a telephone pole, a row of balding trees, looks like the land where time stood still. It has witnessed immense change. And passing no remarks, the trees, the scotch grass, the wild flowers that rear their heads in spring, keep on growing, flowering, shedding. Something, perhaps, here in this brief interlude of peace, we only now have time to acknowledge.
Hi, my name is Iggy McGovern, and I am delighted to introduce a poem that I read at Poetry Fest in 2017. This poem is one of a sequence loosely based on the seven sacraments. In this case, the sacrament of confirmation. An appropriate choice in these trying times that demand extraordinary courage. The richness of Christian liturgy can be quite confusing to a child. And the Holy Ghost, the bringer of confirmation, who is often depicted as a bird, is also more grandly described as a paraclete. My young brain resolved this conflict by deciding that the correct term was parakeet. In Ireland, the common parakeet is better known as the budgie. And we had a succession of these unfortunate birds as pets. They were carbon copies, same size and colour, so if one fell off the perch, he could be discreetly replaced. They were all called Joey. So I hope you will enjoy the Joey Trinity. There were three budgies in one Joey, co-equal but not co-existing. The first taught wisdom through experience, seizing the chance of an open door to ascend into heaven. The second took after Father Peyton, setting up a crusading racket, joyful, sorrowful, glorious by turns during the family rosary. The third, Mirabili Dictu, learned to say his name, the flesh made word, and had the courage to crash land on Dad's bald head, occasioning some tongues of fire. <laughs> Hello there to all you folks in the uh, Irish Arts Centre and all the rest of you over in New York City. This is Dermot from Ye Vagabonds. We had such a great time playing a concert, two, three concerts for you over there uh, in New York just back in February and it seems like quite a while ago even though it's only a few short months. Um, we look forward to, to coming and playing there again hopefully before too long um half blind this song i think you're about to see was written actually in a time when i had kind of self-imposed sort of isolation i was living in i often tell this story on stage i was living in a garden shed that i had kind of fixed up um and i i spent a week just looking out a window guitar in my hand and uh, and figuring out the, these words and, and these melodies. I hope you enjoy it. Yet 
you cast your net when not one star was shining. Caught my eye upon your silver line, torn between resisting and resign. Like a fly toward a flame in Things I could expect to leave behind Then to keep my heart intact And walk a bed half blind Striking while the iron's in the fire Taking ever more than I require